are as aggressive as any team I've seen in college basketball. Great feed by Evans. Reed misses, but there's Patterson. And the Boilermakers tip the ball to Roberts. Early evidence of the marvelous passing ability Evans has. Now Hairston off and traveling. Got in a hurry, did Harrison, but you're right. Brian Evans, the thing you like about him, and Bob Knight has likened Evans to a Chris Mullen, who now plays for the Golden State Warriors, is that he can find people as well as shoot the basketball. There's one minute in, and Purdue with the game's only points. First game these teams played this year, Dove did a very good job in the first half, limited Evans to just three shots. And Gene Candy very open. He says, you know, we have a team that isn't a great shooting team always. We don't have a great scores, but the one thing we do is play defense. Yeah, they've been able to play really well. First of all, when you get opponents to shoot 38%, the 55 points a game is going to show up more often than not. Evans missing, and then the ball, his own shot hit him on the shoulder and went out of bounds. He couldn't catch that. That's one of the things he was thinking of doing. But if you catch your own shot, that's a trap. The Hoosiers have missed their first three shots. And the win today, Purdue could clinch that Big Ten championship simply by winning their last two home games. I think part of, you know, you, you talk about the rivalry. I think if you're in Indiana, you think here's an opportunity to put more pressure on Purdue to have to win some games. Kind of be a little bit of a stickler for them, and that's something that's like to be done by both teams. down low and Lindemann was right by Brantley so Lindemann gets Indiana on the board yeah we got the rim didn't go up very well they knocked it down and it's just a uh, snap back and it just didn't snap back up it that, that may be a problem because that happened quite a bit during the uh, shooter rounds today yeah it did but when you get people in there seven feet 270 pulling on it it's definitely going to come down the question is whether or not it goes back up and you're right it didn't go back up yesterday as we watched practice that's a good sign for indiana they can pull the ball inside and get that kind of scoring any kind of scoring from linda news turned the ball over twice in their first three trips Austin with a good feed and Hairston answers. Austin is their scorer. He turned the corner. Nobody came over to help until too late. And when they did, they leave for Hairston open for the easy dunk. Purdue has been a team, Ted. You know, they've got a lot of guys play well for them. Herb Dove played well for, it, uh, for Purdue when they beat Indiana, as did Brandon. They go right back into Lindemann for another hoop. See, there's nobody tall enough on, on Purdue's team to really guard Lindemann if he gets going offensively. Should be Brad Miller off the bench. Yeah, and Miller, the thing that will help them is Miller will take uh, will take Lindemann outside on the, the on their defensive end because Miller's really a jump shooter. Todd Lindemann, a senior, has missed seven games this year with a foot injury, which is just under eight points a game. This is the one guy. If Purdue has a guy that you ever in tournament time may become their go-to guy. It's Austin. But look at Patterson simply runs the floor. And jams it. And again, the rim sticks. Well, the interesting thing about that, and Gene Cady, and I know why he's responding to that, and I would too. If you've got a fast break situation and that thing stays down on a make, you can't take off. Just Andre Patterson runs the floor. We talked about Neil Reed's ability. He's the one that can get it up. Those two have to perform well for Indiana to have a chance to be Purdue this afternoon. Six. Indiana's got that deep, their defense back deep. Harrison got away with a little shuffle there, setting his feet to shoot. Well, you know, he's allowed to shoot a three-pointer. Gene Cady allows him to shoot one. If he makes it, he might let him shoot another one. After that air ball, I don't think he'll get another one. Patterson has shot well lately, but he misses that three. Long rebound to Lindemann. Purdue's got to do a better job of blocking out. You allow too many offensive rebounds. You give up too many opportunities like that. That's a second chance opportunity. Well, if Indiana keeps dunking the ball, this game's going to take four hours to play. Because that rim is not popping back up. But at some point, the officials got to figure out whether or not they're going to allow this thing to continue this way. They're coming over the top. 
stop to Kim Gall because they keep stopping the game and Gene Cady is not happy. The ball gets into Evan. You see him comes down, but it just does not go up. It's a nice pass inside, but again, you see the rim is supposed to be a snapback and it won't go back up. And that's what the officials are standing and talking about right now. I'm surprised that something wasn't done because during the pregame shooting today, that, that rim was continually down. The players themselves were jumping to pop it back up and uh, apparently it was not addressed until these first couple of hoops. Well, I, first of all, I don't think you have as many people dunking on it. I mean, we saw it yesterday a little bit in practice, no doubt about the fact that it wouldn't go back up. And you see it comes down and it just doesn't snap back up. You, you've seen it periodically. You can just see it's not level. If it, it should be level, if you will, across there. That doesn't necessarily give you the kind of angle you need to see, but it should go back up and be level. But as I said, it was happening in practice yesterday. You just don't have guys dunking on it all the time. Indiana, obviously, has had an opportunity uh, here early to get some dunks, and they may just make the change. It, it's up to Purdue, I would think, whether or not they really want to let it go or not. Well, changing the rim would be a pretty lengthy process, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be a lengthy process. They, they decided to, to forego that at the moment. They're ready to do it, but Chuck will get them to be ready to do it. Well, Indiana, with the lead, Knight talking to the scoring crew while play goes. You talk to the staff at Indiana, they will tell you he traveled again to Roy Harrison. He said Bob Knight in practice was decidedly different, even though, first of all, you give him a week to prepare, He's normally very solid in that regard, but he was on the kids, but not in the sense that anybody felt like they were, you know, being degraded, but he was very much on this team, and that's the way you have to approach this group of Indiana Hoosiers. Charlie Miller gets the lane, and a blocking foul. And Purdue had Brantley there, and that's the second early foul on Brandon Brantley. Brantley had a big game for them at Purdue. He had 24 points and 12 rebounds. So he's a guy they really like to have in because of his activity. Now, Charlie, watch him jump left. See, that's why it's going to be called. Charlie Miller got right after him. And if Charlie Miller moves, and if the man is stationed when Charlie Miller takes off, if he slides at all, then he is now illegal in terms of his position. That's why that's called a block. And now you sit down a fellow that had 24 points for Purdue in their win over Indiana in West Lafayette. Well, they're bringing in Brad Miller, who's been a two-time Big Ten Player of the Week, so they, they feel comfortable that he can give them something, but not what Brantley can. Indiana with a three-point lead at the first break. At Sitco... Our super premium gasoline will give you the high performance you demand. So prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. The Pontiac Firebird waits. 305 horsepower comes to life. turns air into fuel in a rush. Firebird, you're ready to fly. Good morning. How was the couch, okay? Oh, it was, it was great. Complete brand flakes. Mm -hmm. No bacon and eggs. You want me to make you some? Sure. No, it's all right. No, sure. no, it's all right. Make it. She'll make it for you if you want to. I'll make it. I see. Somebody's birthday's coming up. Hey, I realized I eat lousy, I don't work out, I had to do something. Thousands of people have started turning their lives around with four little words. Kellogg's Complete Bran Flakes. Are you eating this just to humor me? No, I just don't want to start looking like you. Kellogg's Complete Bran Flakes. It's a start. It's tough to describe a headache. You just want it gone. But now with Tylenol, two Advil work better on tough headache pain. There is Excedrin, but that's aspirin and the ingredient in Tylenol and caffeine. I don't want all that. I'll go with Advil. Advil contains the number one doctor-prescribed pain reliever in its class. 
Nothing is proven to work better or last longer than Advil. And now, introducing new Advil gel caplets. One more advance for Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. In Bloomington, Indiana has the early lead, and that we understand that they're going to change this. Uh, yeah, they are. We see a ladder coming out of the floor right now. They're going to change the rim that uh, Indiana's shooting out here in the first half because it just won't snap back into place. Yeah, it won't snap back into place. And, and, and as I said, the reasoning, and, and it's good reasoning, if Purdue ever decides that they want to get out and run a fast, uh, fast break off of a make, they can't do it because every time that happens, the officials appropriately have to stop the game, get somebody to push it back up. And this game means too much to these seniors, to keep Katie, not to get this corrected because he doesn't want to, you know, the basket being down or any excuses for these kids. He want to remove all of that so the young people can just play and not be inhibited or concerned about anything other than the game. This is the only Sunday game in the Big Ten. The other four weekend games played yesterday. Illinois hung on to post a win that they desperately needed as they knocked off Iowa. And, of course, the huge news that Lou Henson, after that game, announced he will retire as the Illinois coach at the end of the season. Michigan won last night. Wisconsin surprised Michigan State and Ohio State won. So Purdue's situation, they're still two up in the loss column over Penn State. A win today by Purdue. They can clinch the conference title by winning twice at home. And Indiana Quinn's trying to stay in third, stay above the, that massive team to the middle is worried about making. Yeah, Indiana, as you look at the other page, but I think they're in pretty good position. They've got quality losses. I think that you've got to look at them off the Connecticut, Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, Purdue, and Penn State. That helps them tremendously in terms of trying to secure their position in the NCAA tournament. They, you know, if you look, you get nine wins. If they win three more, it looks better. But their wins, make a, make a, I mean, their losses, are, and the quality of those losses are just huge for them. Illinois, which I think is going to be an emotional game because it's always been against within Indiana at Wisconsin, at Ohio State, and Michigan State. Those are games, you know, you talk to some people around Indiana, and they'll tell you they may, they feel that they may be able to take all of those games. I'm not so sure they can do that, but I think it helps to be able to feel strongly about yourself the last five games of the season. Let's take a look at some of the other Big Ten teams that are in that middle group. Michigan, for example, which won last night over Minnesota, moving back to 500 in the league. A high RPI, but they're not playing well right now. That's something that comes into major play. Yeah, that's what's going to be the, the problem. They've got a pair of quality wins over Duke and Penn State. They need to get, I think, about 10 and 8, if you will. That gives them about 19 wins. I'm sorry, 20 wins, and that puts them in good stead. They're at Illinois, at Northwestern, and playing Wisconsin. The, the question has always been about Michigan. This. Will they come and play teams that they should beat? I mean, they have skills. They're young people. They are talented. But as you know, talent is not something that you necessarily can put on the floor and say play. You've got to come mentally prepared to play. They've got to do it. You see Wisconsin's position with their new coach, Dick Bennett, having beaten already Michigan and Iowa. Nobody talking about Wisconsin, but Dick Bennett quietly has done a pretty good job there. Well, he's not only done a pretty good job at Wisconsin, he did a pretty good job leaving a pretty good team at Wisconsin Green Bay, who's doing very well in that conference. But you can see with their schedule at, at Iowa, mm -hmm. Indiana, Purdue, and uh, I'm sorry, Penn State and Michigan, they have probably the toughest task to try to position themselves as they look at some post-tournament kind of, well, I mean, postseason play. And yeah, that's clearly a much tougher stretch run than the other schools we've seen thus far. Look at Michigan State, which a couple of weeks ago was tied for the conference lead. They have really slipped in the last three weeks. Well, they, they've slipped. They've got to look at the wins. I will Penn State, but I don't think anybody expected this to happen for Penn State, for Michigan State. They have about seven returning players, if you will, from last season. Uh, having Judd Heathcote retire and Tom Izzo take over. So they've got to play it out toughly. They've got uh, eight wins in the conference. You see they're at Michigan, at Indiana, with Illinois in between. I think that puts their hopes Makes them dim. They're not out, though. All right, we have a functioning rim that does snap back at one end of the floor. And a foul on Indiana's Neil Reed at the other end. It's always interested to see when, when you get a break in the action like that, Ted. I'm always interested to see how the emotion swings. Indiana clearly had it going in that direction prior to that uh, rim being changed. Is it tough as a player? You get warmed up, you get started, you break your first sweat, and then you have about a five-minute break. 
I think not only is it tough yeah, physically, it's mentally it's hard. Because once you get it going positively mentally, it seems to kind of feed itself, and that's been broken up by both teams. And Purdue needed to be broken because they had three traveling balls in the first four minutes. And Brad Miller in the game for Purdue, replacing Brandon Brantley out with two quick fouls. And Chad Austin hits the first three of the game. And you talked about them offensively. Chad Austin is the one go-to guy they have that creates some play. Miller going at the other end, and it's sent back. Now Hairston up the floor. Well, Purdue has tied the game at nine, almost five minutes in. The veteran team, they, I mean, even though Indiana gets off to a quick start, there's no way you can figure Purdue to be out of it at any point during the course of the game. There's Miller stepping outside. He's had four big games in a row for Purdue. Shot clock running out. And Indiana with a turnover. Fourth Purdue turnover. Indiana's pushing the ball up. They're looking to take advantage of anything that Purdue gives them. They go back too far in the team. Indiana's looking to even look for jump shots as soon as they can get them. Well, Evans lost Doe for the first time outside. Well, couldn't get through a screen. We welcome you to Assembly Hall here in Bloomington, Indiana. The Indiana campus, Indiana leading Purdue 11-9, almost six minutes in. Yeah, Indiana got off to a good start, but, you know, they, the rim wouldn't stay up, if you will, because it's a snapback, didn't stay up, had to change it. And you can see Purdue has regrouped and gotten themselves back to a tie ball game. Purdue won the first meeting this year between the teams, and Purdue is trying to win their third consecutive outright Big Ten title, something only one team in the history of the Big Ten has accomplished. And the Boilermakers come up with their first turnover, and the baseball pass to Chad Austin. Went right in at Patterson. He fouled him to prevent the basket. But that give Chad Austin some credit because Austin does what you're supposed to do. If somebody's standing back there, challenge him. And that's exactly what Austin does. You see timing it up. There's Andre Patterson. He tries to go after it. Clearly, that's body contact. Ed Hightower standing right on it. Gives the foul to Andre Patterson. Another senior Justin Jennings of Grand Rapids, Michigan, off the Purdue bench. And he's explosive. Very explosive jumper. Can ignite the team. More so if he gets dunked or quickness off of steals. He is one of their real spark plugs. And you can't beat that as a senior coming off the bench knowing the things that the team needs. Now this is an incredibly balanced Purdue team. When it comes to points, and Austin with that number leads the team. 11.6 points a game. He has scored five early here, and now we'll sit as Todd Foster. The senior comes in. UConn winning going over to keep alive their hopes of being a number one seed. And Cincinnati, which was trailing through much of the second half, back to be too late. Foster guarding Brian Evans, who hits the shot over Foster. Well, that's the one advantage. If Indiana gets the ball quickly to Brian Evans, he can shoot over Foster. But Foster is a tough, not a tough, a little tough, very tough player. In the Brad Miller. <laughs> Purdue with the two-point lead. Foster, in the first meeting between these teams, whenever Herb Dove sat, Foster guarded Evans. He's got to be tough because he's given away about three or four inches. No basket. This will be a foul on Purdue's Miller before the shot. See, I don't think you have the savvy with Miller guarding uh, Linderman that you would have when you lose Brantley. That's part of what you got to deal with with Eugene Cady. I mean, Miller is a guy that is a perimeter player. He's big enough, but he's a perimeter player. And I think that's what Purdue's losing, having to put, have Brantley on the bench. A long three by Reed. And another foul on Purdue. Alan Eldridge, freshman guard, called. So Purdue has picked up five fouls in the first seven minutes. Well, that's one. Of the, I think that's one of Purdue's really, really good strengths. They, they also have the number where they shoot more free throws generally than the opponents makes, and that's partially because that means that you have played solid defense without fouling. As they call the offensive foul on Brian Evans. 
Well, Foster got stuck behind him. He might have done the right thing here. Well, here's the position. He turns. There's contact made. He goes down, and the official felt that was an offensive foul. I don't happen to agree with him, but that's that's the call they make. Well, Quinn, we watched Purdue practice here last night, and we saw them do a drill, but I've never seen any other team participate in it, and it may have helped Foster get that foul. Well, they have a drill where they run from the baseline to the half-court line, and there's a guy that has to get there and take the charge. And, I mean, it's not a, a fake charge. I mean, guys throw elbows. And, and I think what it does is it prepares people to take a tough charge. Ayrston missing, but Jennings kicks to Eldridge, who misfires a three. And Patterson corrals it for the Hoosiers. Reed stumbled, and the ball turned back to Purdue. you got to remember, Reed did not practice for the first three games, or the first three days of the week. He practiced yesterday, and he looked rusty. That move was one with the Norman made. Woo! With some comfort. Todd Foster with a bomb for three, and Purdue has a five-point lead. And Reed didn't practice because he has a sore calf. Or he had a, he's got knee in the calf. The problem is you got Charlie Miller trying to handle the ball, and you don't get the ball where you need to get it in order to make play. Green missing. And the tip. Harrison tried to smack it off Evans. The ball missed it. And now Evans for three. He hits. The Big Ten's leading scorer, Brian Evans, is getting involved early. Nine points already. Those guys, you know there's going to be a lot of effort made here. Harrison tries to throw it off of Evans, and he misses. And coming down with it's going to be Linderman. And finally, he's going to find Evans for the three. I am one with my Pizza Hut Rawlings game ball. I am a human highlight film. I Yo, hurry up. am awesome. Come on. But I ate the whole pizza that comes with the ball. So I Stink. am incredibly slow. I'm leaving. The Game Ball, $4.99 with any pizza. Keep the ball, share the pizza. Fool, you'll love the stuff we're made of. Get on your Pontiac. Drive, drive, drive. Did you ever dream of driving in a Grand Prix? The sound of a 215 horsepower, 24 valve engine roaring to life. The hold of the four wheel independent suspension yearning for the next turn the sense of control from a cockpit designed for driving, then you know why the Pontiac Grand Prix is named Grand Prix. We are driving excitement, Pontiac. For a while there, I felt like I was the only one who hadn't taken the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. It seemed like lots of guys were using it, so I gave it a shot. Because this proves it deserves a shot. It evaporates less quickly, also lasts longer, protects better. Old Spice guarantees it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of your old deodorant. Mine never guaranteed anything like that. I guess that's why it's my old deodorant. Hey, take the high endurance challenge, because now you got proof. Guaranteed. Gene Cady's fairly open to, when he talks about living in the shadow in this state of Indiana, the shadow of the great program here in Bloomington. But uh, Purdue has had some outstanding successes under Cady, including those five Big Ten titles. But Quinn, Gene Cady's been very open talking this February with us about March. That's the month that the whole year is. Yeah, there's no question about it. And, and Gene Cady has decided to take, a, I think, a very good approach. What he's done is the last three months, he's decided to shorten practice by half an hour. I think that's important because 
he's got a senior laden team so there's only so much uh, from a technical standpoint you're going to get you need to make sure that they're mentally prepared so he short practice saves the legs and i think that's solid thinking when he knows everybody is graded based upon what they do in march that's the way all athletic directors presidents fans are, are evaluating generally speaking teams and gene katie wants to be evaluated on in a very high fashion he had a number one seed two years ago, the Glenn Robinson team, had lost in the round of eight to Duke. Last year, number three seed, they lost in the second round to Memphis. In fact, Purdue has moved its banquet. Katie has moved the banquet to the Monday following the last Big Ten game as Lindemann gets free inside. Gene says, I want it to be a successful banquet. You come back, if you lose in the NCAA, people wonder, oh, he had a great year, but... So we make sure we have the banquet now before the NCAA. Yeah, and I think that's, a, that's also a solid thing for them to try to get done. Get that out of the way, but you can also focus everybody's attention on what you're trying to get done. Purdue by two. Miller for the lead. Misses. And her dove rebounds. And here's Purdue with a two-on-one. Jennings to Miller. And Miller, a good job pulling up before he charged in the lead. He did. Good job staying under control. Indiana didn't get back. But Purdue's a veteran team. They won't run all the time, but they'll be wise when they do run. Charlie Miller jumps, takes a three-point shot, and anytime you take a long shot, it's going to be a long rebound, and you see right here, Dub gets it, and he just sprints out, and gets, passes it out to Jennings, and there's a two-on-one. Not much Neil Reed can do to try to get his arms outstretched, and Miller's too big. Now, Charlie Miller, through the line, you look at Charlie Miller, Quinn, and you, you've got to feel that eventually this guy's going to kick it in. As he shoots the front end and misses the one-and-one. Well, Indiana is hoping that he kicks it in. He's, he came out of uh, Florida as a highly touted uh, player, offensively can do a number of things, and they need him to do that, shoot the ball as well as pass it. Pretty tightly called first half. Indiana is already in the bonus. That's five team fouls now on the Hoosiers. Indiana has Richard Mandeville on the floor. Andre Patterson is out with two fouls. And Purdue's Brandon Brantley also sitting with two. And Foster knocks down his second three. And the Boilermakers have their largest lead. Dude does a really good job on help side defense. You think you got your man beat. There's always somebody coming over to make you shoot over the top like Miller came that time. But too late for Charlie Miller. But Indiana which leads as Miller's call for traveling. Brad Miller of Purdue. Indiana leads the Big Ten in scoring. They've led five in the last seven years. It's such a wonderful passing team. Yeah, they are, Pat. Good passing team. One of the things you see right there. Actually, I thought that was a pretty good move. From that shot right angle right there, he just got, came to a stop and moved one foot to the right. And that same foot, he picked up and moved to the left. Harris Nuyazinovic in for the first time for Indiana. Hoosiers only go with eight men. And right now they're going to be one short for a while as Patterson sits with two fouls. And that's one man that won't come out, Brian Evans. going to play 40 today. Now this is looking more like the Big Ten. Got the scrum going and everything, even after the whistle. And it's an alternate possession. Held ball will still with Indiana. This was having a little discussion there. This is going to be an air ball now. Harris comes down with the ball. And then all of a sudden moves out toward the foul line. You see right there going down for it, Mandeville. Looks like Jennings is in the middle of it. After, after that, there's Dove right there. He gets grabbed. I mean, I don't know why Mandeville grabs him, but the officials need to be aware of that because if that comes again, Mandeville needs to be reprimanded for that. You can't be grabbing people's jersey. Evans takes Jennings in the lane. Jennings does a good job, got his double team help. There was nowhere for Evans to go. And Miller with a great flash in the paint. A tough pass. Jennings had no shot. Foster does. 
Well, Purdue with a five-point lead. Eight and a half minutes to go, first half. Miller got the leg. Charlie Miller in, scoring, and a foul. That's the element you would think Miller brings. And Indiana really doesn't have another player that can do that. No, no, he's the best they have at being able to slash and cut. Now, he's left-handed. Watch him go avoid the charge. He'll jump to his right and slide through. Dove can't get there. Miller can't take the charge. But Charlie Miller goes to his right hand. That's what Indiana wants to see more of, an aggressive Charlie Miller. Well, that's a big play because that also draws the second foul on Purdue's Herb Dove. Purdue can run a number of people if they have to after Brian Evans, and I'm sure that's what you're talking about with Herb Dove. They can put Justin Jennings on him, and they still have an athlete to go after you defensively. That's why they're so strong. They run three very good at players, tough players after you defensively. There's two. Doubled up, takes the ball out to Roberts. You got to get that. He, he's a sneaky shooter. I watched him shoot yesterday, and I've done a couple other games. When you're watching, he's kind of a sneaky shooter. You've got to come out of him hard. He can make that one. Oh, well, you can set your feet, line the ball up in your hands. It's become a lot better. Evans. And he goes down and is fouled on the shot. Jennings very upset with the call. Evans has been working hard to get open. He's trying to call for the ball. Mandeville standing there, trying to set a pick. Dove can't get to the outside. Evans takes one inside. The shot goes up, but after the shot goes up, Evans goes down and gets two foul shots. And Jennings felt that Evans took a dive. There is the amazing year. Brian Evans is in the top ten in the Big Ten in almost every category. And what amazed me coming here this week, when is that in Bob Knight's 25 years here, no Indiana player has ever led the Big Ten in scoring. And that is probably going to end this year with Evans. It'll be a bit of a change, I'll say that. Purdue by three. At a height of 19 feet, the awkward-looking giraffe would appear to be at a disadvantage in the jungle. But in fact, his height is his greatest asset, allowing him to graze where others can't, easily survey the land, and take gigantic strides when threatened by predators. The preceding has been brought to you by the all-new Nissan Pathfinder, now with a higher stance and more headroom. At Radio Shack, we carry thousands of electronic parts and accessories. Accessories that make what you already own work better, sound better, play better. Help! Help! Just tell us what you need. Help! We've even got those hard-to-get items. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. These days, trying to get on top of your financial situation is getting tougher and tougher. You're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks. But will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders. Because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. chance to take a look at exactly what happened here watch the show left shoulder right shoulder right here pop mandeville right right there now the whistle had already blown and they're still going after it a little bit and i you can see herb dove said something and mandeville was not going to take it so he grabbed the jersey but the officials you said a moment ago was this being called closely yeah it's being called a little bit more closely Ted. and the reason being is this is an emotional game and the officials cannot afford to let the emotions run so high that they get some kind of fight going on here. Purdue already 19 fouls. Indiana 
past five with seven and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Miller using his left hand, got right to the basket. He's a capable offensive player. I mean, he's a, that's one of the things they want him to do is get more confidence and take the ball stronger to the basket. Think about their baskets inside. They got ten baskets, and they got seven of them from the inside, so from the low post. So they've been very active, getting some good shots. Three on two here. Hairston fumbles, gets back to Roberts, and Mandeville clears it for the Hoosiers. Are you starting as after, especially after the wind change early when they're starting to run a little bit? Yeah, but they but they've got a unit that they can run a little better with. At least it looks that way on the floor. A little bit more athletic, better to handle the ball. Mandeville called for traveling. That's for being in a hurry. I mean, he saw what should have happened, and instead of being under control, he was in a hurry and traveled. And you see the bench of Purdue out playing Indiana 12 to nothing from the scoring aspect. And that's the history of Purdue's bench, and that's what seniors on the bench can do for you. And that's not a surprise at all. Indiana not very deep. Great feed, and Miller is hammered. This has been Purdue's story all year deep. They play nine and ten players regularly. You see the numbers average in the 30. That's, that's a 41 percent. And they, they've only, in all their losses, they, they generally have been able to have their bench be productive. But when they've lost, that has not been the case. So you can expect that Purdue has some success. It's because their bench has contributed. It hasn't always been numbers in terms of points. I mean, it's, it's also been uh, rebound. Coming up after basketball on CBS, final round coverage of the Nissan Open from Los Angeles. Neil Lancaster early in the final round, still leading, but Craig Stadler emerged just one shot behind. Brad Miller, 10 points off the Purdue bench, and this equals the largest lead, 7 points for the Boilermakers. You mentioned it. Brad Miller has played four good games in a row. He's been, he was just recently, the week of February 18th, he was the Big Ten player of the week. So he's come in and made some good contributions for him. Harrison smartly ran the ball down and waits. And Foster. Oh, he has hit three of four from the arc in the first half. Oh, he's feeling confident, too. He's pointing fingers at Neil Reed as he's drilling it. There's a seven-point run and a ten-point Purdue lead. It looked like Reed had a shot at the basket. He tried to flip back and threw it out of bounds. I'll have to say Neil Reed may have been trying to make something happen, but I don't think you can do it that way, not jumping in the air and then trying to find someone to throw it to. Well, after the early turnovers play Purdue, it's now Indiana turning it over. Purdue's made five threes already, and they lead by ten. Which takes away a lot of Indiana's strategy of trying to pack it in. They've got to go out and know where the shooters are, and Brad Miller's ability to put it on the floor has been part of the difference here in the first half. Chad Austin. And Evans clears the board. And Reed... It's his first basket for Indiana. You bounced her again. <laughs> well, somebody for Indiana is going to stay right in Foster's face. you got to stay on Foster now. There's no way you can help on any, anybody else when you got a guy making three three-pointers like Foster has. And you see what he does defensively. He gets after it. Foster has been really active. This is him right here, and you'll just watch. He just, he'll pass it away. It got thrown up to him, and he just kind of lulls his defender to sleep. They switch it weak side. Miller gets cut off, and then that's Miller, Charlie Miller, that doesn't get there in time, and then Eggers goes, but it's too late. Look at him. He's just, bang. He knows that's a good one. 
There's a young man that has made an All-American team this year. He was named to the successful Farmers Magazine All-American team. And well, he should be. This is, this is a guy you can see. And, and I say this with all, all affection, with a hat, cowboy hat, some chaps. This is a rodeo guy. This is a guy that wants to spend his life doing the rodeo. you got to like that. But I like his toughness. But I tell you, that's the part I like about him the most. Oh, where's he been? He grew up on a farm in, in Illinois, Washington, Illinois. And that's how he qualified for that honor. He's got two hats, successful farmer's hats that he wears now to all the uh, press conferences. And he got a flat. And a good follow, Justin Jennings. Justin Jennings has the, got a tremendous leap. 31-inch vertical. Charlie Miller didn't block him out, but Jennings is going to be active. I, I expect he's going to make more plays like that. Reed. And a long rebound to Austin. And Purdue again looking to run. Hairston keeps it. And they're going to call a charge on Roy Hairston. He telegraphed it. Once he ball faked like he was going to pass it, it was clear that's what he wasn't going to do. So now you get in position to take the charge as he takes it to the basket. Watch him ball fake it to his right. He does it and re reads it and just stands right there and tries to take the charge. Look at Purdue's bench, and the, the balance has come into play already. Eight different Purdue players have scored a point. You, you talk to Gene Cady and his staff, one of their real strengths is that they don't have quote, a go-to guy. And because they don't, a lot of people stay active and make plays for them. Evans can't dribble the ball, and he's finally able to step up to Reed with it. But it's not his fault. His teammates got to come and help him. Oh, Charlie Miller got in and missed the layup. Yeah, he got pushed up. And when he, as soon as he was starting to gather himself, Roy Harrison got away with it. And then Charlie Miller just never grabbed, gathered himself. And I think he thought a foul would be called. The last Purdue win in Bloomington was 1990. The seniors, 19-6 on the road the last three years in the Big Ten. This is the one building Purdue has not been able to win at. Look at Roberts follow his own miss. And it's cleared by Robbie Eggers. That's goaltender. Neil Reed goes in now. Let's see if they count the basket. Oh, no, neither the officials see it. Well, they call a foul on Hairston. The question is whether or not he gets the ball off the glass coming down. He takes it up. That ball looked like it was going. Ah, he actually got it off. I thought it hit the glass and it started back. Well, Hairston has two fouls. Purdue with a slew of players. And a two fouls. We have 254 to go in the first half. Roy Hairston came in right after Glenn Robinson left, and everyone thought he was going to be a scorer. And Gene Cady had seen him at Hutchinson Junior College, where Gene Cady had coached and liked him because he could steal the ball. get any worse than this. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Huh. I stand corrected. Make it a Bud Light. They're never gonna get it open. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? That's it. <laughs> Look, you have got to go to Office Depot and see for yourself. Office Depot has the best selection. I buzz in, I get what I want, and I'm gone. Either call or fax your order in. You can have delivery the very next day. Office Depot has a great catalog with everything from A to Z. Office Depot, the best. Office Depot, taking care of business for companies of every size, everywhere, every day. Walk not home. Page 
later. Right this second, someone needs a ride. With a Motorola pager, you know. Now. Thanks for picking us up, Mom. Don't hug me. You're wet. Mommy. Okay, you got the pager number, right? Right this second, it's just the two of you. We're, We're going, going out. out. But if the baby needs you, you know. Now. Well, no page, no problem. Let's have dessert. Local resident and diehard Indiana fan John Cougar Mellencamp in his customary seat. He has attended almost every Who's Your Home game this year. Coming up, Penn's Oil at the half. With Pat O'Brien scores and highlights around the country in a conversation with Allen Iverson and John Thompson. That's Johnny Bench. <laughs> That's not quite John Thompson, but he's a, Johnny Bench and Bob Knight are very good friends. Johnny Bench has got the biggest hands. I mean, you know, for a baseball player, and I think that's one of the reasons he's such a good, uh, a good catcher because he had those big mitts. And I don't mean the glove. Strong, yes, very strong. Chad Austin. It's a three, the sixth three by Purdue in the first half. Make that the seventh. Yeah, but I like to tell you what I like. Coming out of a, a, a break in the action, when you can move the ball five or six times to move the defense and get it to your shooter, that's a sign of a good, solid team. Evans got three inside. There's a goal 10. Jennings is called. You're looking at the bench for help. But if you're standing under the basket and you go to block it, more often than not, they're going to call that goal 10. Evans makes the nice little curl cut. You see Jennings coming. He's standing under the basket. Good call. Austin inside, stripped twice, and Charlie Miller out with it for Indiana. Purdue leading by 10. Two minutes to go, first half. Indiana's had to play much of this first half, but they have a lot of games, and one of the problems without Andre Patterson, a guy who can rebound and block shots, but he hadn't been effective, particularly when he's sitting on the bench. Long rebound to Porter Roberts. And Indiana cannot afford to lose a guy like that with the depth problems they have. It also hurts them when they're trying to get back in the game, because Andre can make a couple quick one-on-one -on -one moves and make it difficult on anybody. Oh, Miller made a great spot inside to see Jennings, and then Evans comes over the top and picks up his second foul. Well, Miller is a guy who can shoot three, but you saw him put it on the floor. It's a nice little lob pass, he, knowing that Jennings can go up and get it. And Brian Evans comes over and makes the foul, has to come over the top. Brian Evans has done everything for this team. I mean, I, I know as a senior it should be your team, but that doesn't mean you do everything. And that's been the problem Indiana's had. Brian Evans has been consistent. The balance of the team just has not. Bobby Knight has been very honest and candid. In fact, this week made some comments that this particular Indiana team doesn't have the mental toughness of many of his prior teams. So it doesn't mean they don't want to win, but they just don't have the mental toughness. And he said, that's something we're working on in our recruitment for next year. Well, that's why they're inconsistent. Because you, they've won big games, and the very next game, they've come back and just have not been very effective at all. And that is 95% mental toughness. You know you go, that they're going to be prepared. It's whether or not you can execute what you've been preparing. Lindemann. And Lindemann is called for the foul as he turned right into Brad Miller. What? The question is whether or not it is a foul. He, Lindemann turns. Oh, no. He's right. Lindemann lowered his down. He's mm -hmm. absolutely right. And Miller just held his ground. Miller is, is becoming the player that they like. I mean, I like, I really like this Miller. But I thought that particular time Miller put his arms over the top. And, and that's what they had called for an offensive foul. And that's not what you want. Down the road, the Purdue people feel pretty strongly that Miller has the chance, best chance on this team to play in the pros. If he's going to play, he's got to get a much more aggressive approach to the game. He, if he's allowed to play in an easy little zone, he's fine. But when you get to the pros, they make you step it up quickly. They're working on Brad Miller trying to get him to uh, get the right amount of rest. Lindemann with a layup. Miller likes uh, late night movies. And doesn't like to get up and eat breakfast in the morning. Sounds to me like pretty normal college kid. Yeah, he really is. But he, he's a kid just trying to enjoy college. And he has to understand by the nature of what he's doing, it requires a lot more attention and discipline. Now well, Indiana can knock it down to a seven here. Oh, oh, holy Miller! From Reed, spectacular and the Hoosiers have cut it to seven. 
Purdue for the last shot, and it's Brad Miller with the dunk. Got the fans back in the game, but it was too late for the half. Well, a terrific first half here in Bloomington. A spectacular Indiana play on this alley-oop to Charlie Miller, but Purdue gets the last hoop and a nine-point lead. Pennzoil at the half with Pat O'Brien comes up next. Oh, yeah, I'm a Grand Prix kind of guy. I just hate it when we have to hurry. Who's she kidding? She's just itching to fire up our new Grand Prix and book. When you get big and right up front, you'll really appreciate the new airbags. Come on, Ma, this is a Pontiac. I heard her telling Dad how much punch that V6 had. You want to drive? And since we saved more than a 1000 over the tourists, we started our college nest egg. Look, freeway, one mile. I have to take the freeway after all. Drive in excitement, Pontiac. Yeah! Without limits, that's the world that's coming. That's the world we want. And one company can help you put it all within your reach. Now, great time to be alive. The world is moving to a brilliant sun. Now is a great time for man, woman, child. I tell you, children, I tell you something. Listen, people, I tell you something. My human family, I tell you the truth. It's all within your reach. AT&T, that's your true choice. Coming up on Pennzoil at the Half, a chat with Georgetown's John Thompson and Alan Iverson. Scores and highlights on Pennzoil at the Half after a message and a word from your local station. Before we tell you anything else about this car, we want you to know that it costs 35 grand, which we at Oldsmobile think is a darn good price for a V8 luxury performance sedan like the Aurora. Actually, the people in finance wanted to ask 50, but we talked them out of it. It's your money. Accused of an unbelievable crime. I did not kill my daughter, Your Honor. A working class family up against the system. Isn't it time for us to fight back? Struggling to prove their innocence. I find who did kill Jacqueline, and we don't go to trial. Based on the true story, critics call powerful. Starting tonight, gone in the night. See it to believe it. You're on CBS. I like the only price because I don't have to worry about dickering with somebody. With the only price, the price you see is the price you get. Kelly makes buying a new car very hassle-free. There's no uh, dealing back and forth. The only price is excellent. It's fair. And I don't think it can be beat. If it wasn't for the only price, I would not have bought a new car. The only price saved us two to three thousand dollars on the cars that we were looking at. Hi, welcome back. Remember me? Things really changed out here at Cherry Hill. It just gets better every day. See this grass? It's really greening up on the 18-hole championship golf course. And uh, don't forget the swimming pool and the tennis courts. Come on, streets are in, lots are set. But you better hurry. I mean, anything this good won't last forever. Cherry Hill from Colonial Development. The very best from the ground up. Roger's playing today. As you're watching the big game, don't forget to watch this Tuesday as News Channel 15, your home for Big Ten basketball, draws the winning name in the Pepsi Damon Bailey sweepstakes. Watch during our 6 p.m. news this Tuesday to see if you're the winner. Remember, you'll win a brand new 55-inch Pioneer TV and be able to go one-on-one -on -one with Fort Wayne's very own Damon Bailey. So watch this Tuesday at 6 p.m. during the 6 p.m. news only on News Channel 15. Coverage you can count on and win on. Babies all this week during my health watch at 5 and 11. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Well, with John Cougar Mellencamp in the house, Purdue is trying to make Indiana hurt so good. 46 to 37 is the score at halftime. And welcome back to Pennzoil at the Half. I'm Pat O'Brien. I'm Pat O'Brien in New York. Let's fire up the scoreboard now and get you caught up on what's going on in the country. This was a barn burner, folks. 65 to 63 was the final Cincinnati over Tulane. Let's look at the highlights. The green wave of Tulane. Nice looking student there. Bob Huggins all over the refs today. And he finally watched the top of your screen get slapped with his second technical right there. And the fans waved 
Nah, 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 nah. Goodbye. Tulane Storm back, taking a one-point lead, but Cincinnati's Darnell Burton. Watch this. Thank you, Bob, for watching CBS Home of the Tournament. Darnell Burton on the right side gets it up, but the headline tomorrow will read Bob Huggins rips the refs. Here he is. Shorts are ridiculous. Guys work too many games, and they come in with bad attitudes, and, and I get the first technical because the guy tells me to sit down. I told him I haven't sat down in 20 years, which I haven't. And the second one, he comes over, and I said, I can't believe you did that. And he starts on me. I said, what are you going to do, run me? And he gives me a technical for saying that. I mean, it, that's, uh, that's uncalled for. But they win the game 65 to 63. UConn clinches the top seed for the Big East tournament. They beat Villanova today without Kerry Kittle, 70 to 59. Virginia Tech and Temple, uh, 35 to 26 now in the second half. In Conference USA, Louisville and Memphis, 47 to 40 in the second half. And the ACC, NC State and Georgia Tech in overtime now. Georgia Tech leading 82 to 79. And out in the Big Eight, Oklahoma and Nebraska, big game in overtime, 70 to 67 uh, is the score now. And at the half rolls on, we'll sing along with Hoya head coach John Thompson and his sophomore sensation, Allen Iverson. Stay with us. You know, we don't walk around here holding hands and singing the nursery rhyme. We're all so happy together here at Georgetown University. This is an educational institution. In shopping for a luxury performance sedan, Jay Kerness tested the Oldsmobile LSS against the fastest, most nimble machine on earth, Juma the Cheetah. The LSS's sport suspension and traction control attacked the course, as did the Cheetah. But while he considered the LSS's precise handling quite impressive, there was one thing he failed to consider. Cheetahs are very sore losers. Will the LSS pass your test? Nice, kitty. Go away. What gives Wendy's new Pepper Jack Bacon Cheeseburger that spicy hit everybody loves? The quarter pound of fresh beef, the bacon, the perfect sauce, or the slice of Pepper Jack cheese? It's gotta be the cheese. Wendy's new Pepper Jack Bacon Cheeseburger. It is the cheese. We have seen a new beginning in higher education, a new public university, creating a higher standard for learning and giving people the skills to compete in the world economy, a true partner in the future of Indiana and America. For 175 years, we have grown to become that university. We are America's new public university. Celebrating 100 years of athletic and academic excellence. Welcome back to Penzo at the half. I am Pat O'Brien. Georgetown superstar Allen Iverson has made his case for player of the year honors this season, averaging 24 points a game and ranking third in the nation in steals. But things didn't always come so easy. In July of 1993, Iverson was jailed for taking part in a bowling alley brawl. Last summer, Iverson's conviction was overturned, and he was has blossomed on the Georgetown campus. On Friday, our Michelle Tafoya sat down to talk hoops with Iverson and his coach, John Thompson. Last year, I did a lot of rushing, made a lot of bad decisions. This year, I'm, I'm learning the game more and uh, learning a lot more. I'm uh, practicing on my judgment and my patience. You know, that's something the that coach talks to me about all the time. A lot of point guards aren't as talented as out, so they don't have to worry about themselves. They can come out on a basketball court and only worry about others. And then people say, oh, they're so disciplined. They're not disciplined. They're limited in talent. Some have suggested, longtime observers of Georgetown have suggested that maybe he's even, his style of play has rejuvenated you as a coach. It has. He's an exciting person. He's, in the he's a challenge. That rejuvenates me. 
Talent rejuvenates me, it certainly does. You know, we don't walk around here holding hands and singing the nursery rhyme. We're all so happy together here at Georgetown University. This is an educational institution. They got it, Iverson. Yep. When do you think you'll know, and how do you think you'll know when you're ready to turn pro? He won't answer that, because I'm not going to let him. I know you don't want me to ask him, so let me try something with you. You have been successful at keeping players like Patrick Ewing, Dikembe Mutombo, Alonzo Mourning in school for four years. Is this going to be for you a different kind of challenge as far as Allen Iverson? No, if you were to ask him right now, he'd tell you I'm going to stay in school for four years. I know that. I don't want him locked in that box. I don't want him to say he's coming out next year or this year. And the only people that do that with him are people who are not involved in his educational process. How much have you changed as a person since you arrived at Georgetown? I don't know. Um... I can answer that. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I think he's changed a lot. But let me just say something about it. I don't know that many kids came into college that I can recollect with the burden and the pressures that he had on him. Have you ever sat in the stands? and heard a whole mob of people, including adults, yelling jailbird, but he had to take it. So how has he changed? He's changed like most sophomores have. He thinks he knows everything and probably knows very little, but he does know a lot more than he did as a freshman. And I respect the fact that he hadn't won. Never one time came to me and said, Coach, it's too much. Never one time came to me and said, did you hear what they were yelling at me? This is the first time he's heard me say some of what I'm saying to you right now. See, he's heard me curse at him, tell him he's got to do better, you've got to be stronger, because I know the challenge that's in front of him. And I know the challenge that's in front of him, he's going to have to walk that street alone. But in the same token, I respect the fact that he tried to handle that in a very manly manner. How's it feel to hear that for the first time? Feels good. I mean... I guess, I guess I have changed a lot. Um, I learned a lot since I've been here, and um, I've been through a lot. You know, I, I came in here a little different from everybody else, and um, I guess I have handled that the way I should have. Let me ask you a little bit about your coach, because I think people who don't know your coach that well probably... You don't know his coach. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about him, and tell me about your relationship with him. I've had a lot of coaches, and... And he just opened my eyes up to so many things. I think he's the most intelligent man I've ever met in my life. I mean, I don't know what I'd do without him. And a reminder, join us uh, next Saturday here on CBS for college basketball wheel action with rotating coverage of multiple games. We tip off at 1 p.m. Eastern with Arkansas against LSU. Then at 2 o'clock, fourth-ranked Villanova takes on Allen Iverson and number 11, Georgetown. Coming up, it's Ted and Quinn with the second half of Purdue, Indiana after this message and a word from your local station. Thanks for watching. Penn's Oil at the half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. Roscoe? Penn's Oil at the half was sponsored by Penn's Oil. For more engine miles, Penn's Oil works like liquid ball bearings. There you are, driving the new E-Class, when who do you see but fashion designer Isaac Mizrahi. And he says, oh, nice car. Rounding the corner, you see Bill Glass. And he says, nice car. And look, there's Donna Karen. And she says, nice t-shirt. After which she says, nice car. So who's got the hot new look for 96? cheese hidden between two layers of crust. The new triple-decker pizza from Pizza Hut. Only $9.99. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Live performances by TLC, Coolio, Hootie and the Blowfish, Mariah Carey and Boys to Men, and Seal. The Grammy Awards, Wednesday on CBS. You're on CBS. It really
really makes the room, doesn't it? Uh-huh. I mean, just look at the light it lets in. Really dramatic, isn't it? Uh-huh. Nothing brings out the best in a home quite like Pella Windows. I just think it's amazing how it opens up the whole room, don't you? Amazing. Pella Windows, the first thing you should look into in your home. Why don't we open the window? At Physicians Health Plan, we think that paperwork is more than just a waste of your time. PHP, still the number one plan by choice. News Channel 15 investigates hazardous homes for rent. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, performance, and value are never optional. Advil, advanced medicine for pain, and by Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. We're back at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. A terrific first half. Purdue leads by nine. Not only is this a great rivalry, but there's also importance at stake in the Big Ten Conference, where Purdue is trying to achieve something remarkable. Three consecutive outright conference titles, something, Quinn, that's happened only once in the long history of the Big Ten. Yeah, there's no question about it. They're trying to do something that's very unique. The last time it was done, it was done with the team with this gentleman on it, and it's a little hard to see it as I draw that circle, but that gentleman happens to be the coach of the Indiana Hoosier, Bob Knights. That's the last time three consecutive Big Ten titles outright have been won. And Purdue got it going in the first half because they got great bench production. Foster had 12 points in nine minutes, and then Brad Miller gave them another 12. Now, this is a senior late Purdue team, something you don't see as often in college basketball right now. A lot of seniors on a team, and they played with that kind of poise in the first half. And if I'm... Uh, if I'm Indiana Quinn, I know that their Purdue's bench is going to score, but I'm sitting there thinking there's no way Purdue's going to shoot that well in the second half. Well, I, no question about it. You would think that that would be the position, but what what you have with seniors is they're smart enough to know that they won't shoot that well, and they'll start taking the ball to the basket, and that's where Indiana has to be sensitive to those kind of thoughts as well. Purdue leading by nine. Brandon Brantley did not play much in the first half. He picked up two quick fouls. See, they take it right back out of their patient. They, if, if they can, what they really want to do is try to get Andre Patterson to get another foul and get him out of the game. And this is their go-to guy. Chad Austin. And Austin knocks down the first shot of the second half. If you talk about a go-to guy, if they don't have it per se, but a guy who can create shots, and what you do in creating shots is get people off balance so you can control what they have to do in order to get back in the play, and that's what Austin can do better than anybody on Purdue's team. Gene Cady says he doesn't mind not having a go-to guy during the regular season. As Reeves miss, battle for the ball, good fight by Lindemann. And Evans pays off for Indiana. I think that's the kind of effort you've got to see all night this afternoon in Indiana because otherwise they, they, they have got to give themselves two or three more opportunities than normal because they just don't shoot it well enough. And the pass, Roy Hairston finds Austin. Gene Cady said, oh, I may be concerned in March in the tournament. That's where I may miss not having a Glenn Robinson or a Conzo Martin to go to. Yeah, and it's always good to have one of those guys to go to, but I think even Gene Cady knows the importance of just having people on the floor that make plays, because with those two guys, they have yet to be able to get what they ultimately want, which is an NCAA championship. Indiana has Evans playing Austin. They're switching all across the top, and that's how Evans get on, gets on him. Is pinned. And Hairston is going to have to put it up with three. Reed back for Indiana. Nine point Purdue lead. And a strip by Hairston. Purdue is out three on one. Give it back to him. Good play. And Porter Roberts. 
trip was made by Roy Harrison. That's that's one of the things he does best. That's why Gene Cading won it. He leads the Big Ten in steal, does Roy Harrison. Charlie Miller knifing to the basket. 12 points for Charlie Miller. One thing Purdue can't, or one thing Indiana cannot afford is basket trading. That's what's happened here to start the second half. If they can get, you know, the, the people they need to take jump shots, they got it that time at Bradley, just didn't do a good job of coming up with the rebound. And now Indiana reaching in and reaching in on Dove, and finally Miller is called for a foul. Purdue, a team that has, look at that. Eight players, 10 plus minutes, eight different players have led them in scoring. And seven different players have led them in rebounding. So you look at most teams, and you're normally the maximum you'll see, and you look at the scoring and the rebounding. There's maybe two or three different names in those two categories, and they've got eight in each of them. And you contrast that with Indiana, where Brian Evans has led them in scoring in all but two of their conference games. And he goes in and missed the layup. They got fouled. Uh, he, he did by Foster. Yeah, he, there's no doubt about it. He got fouled, but, but the official never got himself. He was trying to get back. You see, Evans is all of the, all, right now, from the time he started through that little crack, he was anticipating getting the steal. Now, you can see right there, he got grabbed on the arm, and he never was able to get it up. And the official just couldn't get down there in time to see it. He got himself screamed out because the guys got down there so quick. Foul was called on a follow-through against Allen Eldridge of Purdue, and now a quick one on Brantley. That's his third. Yeah, and they're trying to calm Brantley down. You're right, he picked up his third. I looked at Gene Cady and Coach Weber and Frank Kendrick. All three of them stood up right away and said, shut up, because they can't afford not to have him in the game. He's an active player. Patterson inside. He picked up his fourth. And scored with a fourth foul on Brantley. That's why you need Patterson in the game. It's the only real inside threat that you ever have. They get the ball down to him. You see baseline side, good pass where the ball has to be. Brantley comes over. There's some contact made. They felt that Brantley went underneath. He picked up his fourth spot. Well, there's the man who led Purdue in scoring when they beat Indiana last month with 24 points. Today, he's been a non-factor. Because he's been found himself with two fouls in the first half on the bench, two here quickly in the second half. But Brad Miller has come in and more than aptly fit in with Brantley on the bench. Well, now Indiana's within six. This is the closest they've been since midway through the first half. Foster in the game for Purdue. He made four threes in the first half. for the reach-in foul, and that is the third on Neil Reed. And at the first break of the second half, Purdue's lead is six. No, I, I knew Advil was good, but this good? I was just in the dentist chair. Big time pain. What does my doctor recommend? Not the prescription pain reliever you'd expect, but Advil. Come on, Doc. Advil works better than a prescription. You know? It did. Advil's that good. On tough dental pain, two Advil work better than any two extra strength Tylenol. Even better than two tablets of Tylenol with codeine. Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Here comes one. Oh, an 87 Buick station wagon. Got it. 74 Volkswagen Beetle. Horsepower V8 six speed 1996 Chevy Camaro Z28. Yeah, but what color? There's a place in New York owned by the biggest sports stars around. You know, I like to be long hair. And you never know sure. when they'll show up. Well, sure. It's the official All Star Cafe. Ken Griffey Jr. 301 lifetime average. Where the owners are all. It's 3.02. So if you go, bring the right stats and the right card. Visa, because the All-Star doesn't take American Express. 3.01, lifetime average. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. 
NASA honors America's Olympians. Like Ray Urey of Purdue University and Mark Spitz of Indiana University. Today, collegiate athletes are in training for future Olympics. And Visa will donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team for their efforts in the development of our future U.S. Olympians. Next Friday, CBS Sports presents a primetime skating special, Sergei Grinkoff's Celebration of a Life, as Olympic and world champions join together to honor the magic and memory of Sergei Grinkoff, Katerina Vitt, Oksana Bayul, Christy Yamaguchi, Brian Boitano will all perform, and Yekaterina Gordieva will be in attendance Friday night at 9 Eastern on CBS. And here is Miller with a steal. And Charlie Miller brings Indiana within four. That's what the Hoosiers needed, Quinn, was to get back in the game early. In this well, half. What they needed was to get the fans into it. The last time Charlie Miller made a play was the end of the half. Purdue came right back and successfully got a basket to quiet the fans. Seven straight Indiana points. And that is out of bounds off her go. The time is running out on the ability to be able to get the ball in on the out-of-bounds play. So the pass is lobbed. Charlie Miller anticipates it. And it hits Brad Miller. Charlie Miller gets it to go to the basket. Gets the dunk. 22nd timeout taken by Purdue. Well, for Bob Knight and for Indiana, a ball game, if they, if they win it, keeps them suspense in the Big Ten race and I think would cement their NCAA hopes. They've been to the tournament 10 straight years. A lot of folks in Iowa are hoping that they get some help from Indiana so that when Purdue goes to Iowa for the last game of the season, that might mean something. Well, you go to Iowa, I mean, Purdue, Iowa can want that, but you, you get to Purdue and you can get something on the line with the seniors' last game, like you got here with, you know, with Brian Evans. You get those last games at home, seniors can step up then. Neil Reed, Charlie Miller, and Brian Evans, three Indiana players, have gone the in distance so far. That's what they need. Let's get it in there, and they can get some play. But without, without Andre Patterson on the bench, they never could get anything. Nine straight points for Indiana. Austin with a miss. And Neil Reed with the rebound. threw it right to Austin. And Evans commits his third foul. But he commits a smart foul if you don't want a guy to get to the basket and get it in. Makes a good effort to get the ball. But Charlie Miller had his mind made up because it looked, appeared to me out of the left side of his eye he saw Brian Evans. What he did not see was Chad Austin. And Austin comes up with the steal and then tries to motor as quickly as he can. And Evans tries to get over. Actually got away with the shove before the shot. But he fouled. Chad Austin, and Austin has two foul shots. It's interesting how two of Evans' three fouls have been that hustling back as the lone defender. Yeah, you know what? When you do the, as many things as Evans, you would hope that that would not have to be his responsibility, but I think that shows you the kind of help he needs to have on his team. He's got to make the block, get the rebound, make the pass, and then hustle back. Brad Miller had the rebound, but Indiana took it from him. That's Brian Evans. Three-point lead for Purdue. Nice pass. And Brad Miller blocks Lindemann's shot. Foul on Purdue. Near the end of today's game, Quinn and I will select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. Today, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Gene Cady knows that Todd Linderman can be successful if you've got Andre Patterson in the game because Andre Patterson will command some attention down on the block and it'll free Linderman to catch the ball and sometimes make the play. That time he got fouled, missing the first of two foul shots. Or one 
once again, it's a two-point game. Purdue led by nine at the half and by 11 early in the second half. Purdue is really tough to guard when they move. When they stand around, they make themselves easy to guard, and I think they've done a lot more standing here in the second half than they did in the first half. Austin goes by Miller. You gotta get there. That was a pass by Austin, and Hairston stays with the ball. Three now seconds. three seconds. Well, Chad Austin was a guy you know who gets the ball on the perimeter that he's capable of making shots. He goes up and tries to draw people, and at the last minute, Roy Hairston gets his hand on the ball, tries to throw it off of Charlie Miller. He misses it, then he gets it. They're in there trying to fight it off a little bit, and there's no way for Roy Hairston to get out in the position. Indiana still with 17 on the shot clock, trying to tie the game. And Evans going to miss. Miller with a rebound. Lindemann called for the foul. Brian Evans gets the ball. He gets a lot of attention. And three, there were three people on him. Miller gets a tough rebound, gets the arm caught in, and he throws it away. And as he does so, Lindemann puts his arm in the face, and the official called a foul on Lindemann. Purdue needs a shot to break this drought. The moment he scored seven points in the first seven minutes of the second half. Austin for three. Evans over the basket, sets up Reed. a torrid shooting first half Purdue has gone cold and they've lost an 11 point lead well that's exactly what you were talking about at the beginning of the half you couldn't expect Purdue to continue to shoot the ball as well from the perimeter I had expected Purdue to be more aggressive than taking the ball to the basket Miller picks up the end. You gotta have, I'm sorry, you got to have somebody that's really active and understands the game. Evans is right here. Now, he'll get it. What really sets the play up is, is Evans will get it here, and he'll move it. And then, then watch right here what happens. The ball goes inside. The defense collapses. Evans gets it, and then you can throw it back out. And this is a shot over pressure that Neil Reed just drilled. Purdue has played with such poise through most of this game, but the first, last couple of minutes, the first signs of the panic that we see. And Evans missed the layup. Well, he didn't use the glass, he missed the layup. And if that's Evans, that's his fourth foul. I think they called it on Charlie Miller. Yeah, they did call it on Miller. Evans was undecisive, indecisive. get out and, and do what they need to do in terms of make plays. Bob Nice trying to encourage him. But Brad Miller anticipate a cut by Roy Harrison. It got blocked by Andre, Andre Patterson. The ball gets pushed up. And it, right here, Brian Evans just loses his control in terms of his concentration. He missed it, and Charlie Miller gets called on the backside. He didn't know whether to dunk it or lay it in, and he, consequently, he laid it on the backside of the rim. Well, Brad Miller at the line as Indiana has now committed 17 fouls. Indiana has Evans, Miller, and Reed, each with three. We still have 12 minutes to play. With the exception of a short break, I don't think that Bob Knight's going to want to make many substitutions here. They'll just hope that, you know, either uh, free throws will get some time out. But the, the crew he has on the floor is the one he wants to play with. Gene Cady trying to get a call. And head time, time telling him there was nothing. Katie changed his routine. He brought the Purdue team up here yesterday and practiced as Miller fouls from the back, something that the, the Boilermakers usually do not do on the two-hour trip to Bloomington. But the players wanted to practice here yesterday to prepare for this game. We're at Assembly Hall on the Indiana campus. The great college basketball venues, the Boilermakers lead the Big Ten. Indiana's in third place. And the Purdue seniors who have won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships trying to win here for the first time ever. And Lindemann puts Indiana back in front. 
Indiana's been able to get it inside, and with Andre Patterson on the floor, he didn't play nine minutes in the first half. They've gotten opportunities to make plays with Lindemann being active and Evans getting offensive, offensive minded. Patterson squares up, and Brad Miller pushed the Lindemann, and Miller picks up a foul, and that's going to be his fourth. So now Brantley and Miller, the two real big men for Purdue, are saddled with four fouls. We'll have more NCAA basketball after this message and a word from your local station. Hi, we're not home right now. We just got a new jet ski STS watercraft. We'll call back just as soon as we get home. The jet ski STS. It's got all the power handling, and stability of family needs. It's your mother. How come you never call? Ask your participating dealer about no money down and no payments or interest for a limited time. Now through March 31st. This is CBS. Well, so, Henry, this your uh, vintage car? This is her. <laughs> so how much you thinking? Of three thousand. Three thousand. Does it run? Good as anything else around here. Well, let's see. <laughs> New transmission? Oh, same as. Rebuilt. Russ Moore in 1964. Russ Moore, huh? Four thousand. Well, Henry. Five thousand. What? When I'm driving down the road, uh, people see the big shingle sign. Looks real nice. Shinkles has been delivering dairy products for over 50 years. It's a good company. I've worked for them about 10 years. They care about the people. A real good quality product. We deliver to convenience stores, big supermarkets, little supermarkets. They depend on me that they get it every day. Thank mom for buying Shinkles. <laughs> there goes the Hollywood deal again. <laughs> $2.99 The lowest prices you've ever seen. The lowest prices ever on the number one cars in Northeast Indiana, like $2.29 for Lumina, the number one midsize, and $1.99 for Cavalier, the number one small size, and only $2.19 for Camaro, the number one sports car. $2.29, $1.99, and $2.19. The lowest prices you've ever seen. Tax savings, too. So see your Northeast Indiana Chevy dealer today. If you don't watch, you don't get a play. Purdue's big men are hampered with fouls. Brad Miller, 14 points, now six with four. Brandon Brantley has come back in to play with four. And I think you got to find a way to get the ball to Todd uh, Linderman with Brantley on it and let him see can he get a, a foul or bad. And Lindemann has been a big part of this for Indiana. 13 points and 8 rebounds. So six of those 8 are offensive rebounds, so he's been able to be effective on the glass. Purdue led by 9 at the half. Indiana now has a 1-point lead. 11 minutes to play. And Charlie Miller missing a 3. Roy Hairston clears it. Purdue got some solid defense. That was about 30 seconds of good defense. And you don't see a lot of teams do that anymore, that play that consistently for that long. Brantley, the 15-footer misses, Lindemann plays it. That's one that Brantley's got to rethink the next time. He sat on the bench long enough. You need to let it go around a couple, three times to get a layup if you can first. Lindemann's being guarded by Foster. Well, that was easy. Yeah, you got to get it to him. The question is whether or not, not only you recognize it, but do you get it where it belongs. Well, a three-point Indiana lead. Purdue's drought continues. Foster tries to break it. And Evans with a strong rebound. Purdue has missed its last eight shots. Now off the ball. Foul on Porter Roberts. Well... Linderman has been effective, as you said, he's got 13 points. But you see, Foster gets switched on him, and then Linderman wisely just tries to trap him and get him there as quickly as he can. Brantley comes to help, but he has four fouls, and there's nothing he can do. I like what Foster did. He realized he was in trouble, so he just kind of leaned on Linderman's back. 
and hope that he could uh, push him or jar him a little bit. Well, in those circumstances, you know, fr frankly, I think if you get caught like that and you know he's going to turn and make the shot and he's not a good foul shooter, as is the case with Linderman, you foul him. You don't let him get into a foul shooting, I mean, to a shooting motion so you can get the, you know, if he's got to make the bonus, then you've got a better chance. Neil Reed, today, seven assists, just two turnovers. Handling the ball the full way. Here's the guy they need to have on the floor. Now, mind you, he didn't play the first three uh, practice the first three days of the week because of a bruised calf. This is Indiana's largest lead. But remember, Neil Reed is the same guy we all watched, I believe, last year on CBS with a sore shoulder agonizing and playing. So he's a pretty tough kid. Ashton making a tough shot. Evans back in transition, and Evans has just picked up his fourth foul. So with 9.38 to play, Indiana's key man, Brian Evans, has four fouls. Tries to go to the basket. One of the things Purdue prides itself on, charts not only by game but by half, is whether or not they have any charges. So they concentrate on that. As you talked about the drill, Brian Evans picked up his fourth foul on a charge. That's just another form of a turnover. But if you don't get a steal, just make sure the opposition doesn't get a shot. Indiana protect him on defense now, Quinn? Well, Brian Evans can protect himself pretty much because he's, he was never really known to be a great defensive player. So what he, the problem is, it's going to make him tough to rebound. Oh, a big drive by Hairston with a foul. That's a great drive by Hairston to the left. And Andre Patterson tried to come get there and just got there much too late. But, but that's what you expect from your seniors. Put it on the floor. He's got Linderman, puts it on the floor, takes it up strong and gets it up. Patterson comes, tries to get it, and just there too late. See, Linderman knows he's in trouble, hoping for help. Andre Patterson comes over. Nothing he can do but foul. Well, short on the foul shot. Purdue's going to need Hairston to step up a little bit larger with Brantley and Miller. Hampered in foul difficulty. And Lindemann gets two more. So they'll just throw it over the top, but Andre Patterson allows them to do that. If Andre's not in the game, your, your man defensively doesn't have to worry about Patterson saying he can double-team Lindemann. Let's see if Harrison will try to take Lindemann on the dribble again. Lindemann's backing up, trying to get as far away from him as he can. If you watch Lindemann, he was just shuffling backwards. At seven feet, we just throw it over the top. You see, again, Bradley comes over it, but there's not much he can do with this with four fouls. And Lindemann just shoots it right over. Lindemann has made all eight of his shots from the floor. He has 17 points. Right to the basket, a block. Patterson rejects Porter Roberts. Now, the shot clock has not reset. Oh, it doesn't recycle. They didn't hit the rim, but this is what a senior does for you. And a big block again, but that's Patterson's fourth foul. That's what Porter what Roberts would do. You know, that's a guy that needs to be given some credit as Andre Patterson picks up his fourth. But Porter Roberts is a guy who started on two in, in, uh, Big Ten championship teams. So this is a guy that knows how to make plays when they have to, to get some things done. Right here, Roberts takes it in. Patterson make, does a good job getting that one out of there. Then they came up with the basketball, and Roberts took it to the goal. Tough. And got it to Brant. Then they get it right back. You see Harrison gets it to him. Shot clock on your left, down to five. And watch, Roberts glances up and knew right away that he had to get something going. Brandon Brantley makes two. Indiana by a point. And Indiana now in some serious foul trouble. Evans with four, Patterson with four. Reed and Miller both have three. Well, you got Brantley and, and Miller with four. So it really is a, uh, pretty much a game of attrition now. Who stays on the floor? But Indiana needs their people to stay on the floor, don't they? Well, I don't think it's any different for uh, Purdue. I don't think they can ill afford not to have either Brantley or Miller on the floor. And Ray Patterson missed, went down, spun out, and Hairston rebounds. Because those are the big bodies, Miller and, and Brantley, the guys that play their center position, even though Harrison can. They need them on the floor, too. Purdue has stayed here with Justin Jennings for a long stretch. That lets Evans breathe a little easier on defense. Jennings is not a scorer, but he's active offensive rebounder. Austin tried to drive right at Evans. 
And the rebound foul on Purdue. That's on Jennings. He's, he's an active offensive rebounder. And they call it on that Gene Katie's laughing. He, he could, should be. Because, frankly, the, the other issue was the 42 was in that yes. mix, Brantley. And they very easily could have called it against him. But as you see, Indiana has obviously the most foul trouble with four out of their five starters with three or more fouls. The shot to go up. You'll see Brantley goes after this. And then Jennings comes over. And Jennings basically gets to uh, Patterson first. That's why he gets called for the foul. But if he doesn't, Brantley would have gotten a, his fifth foul. And then one and one missed by Andre Patterson. So a chance for Purdue to regain the lead as we wind down towards seven minutes remaining. Purdue, like Indiana, a team that sets a lot of screens, and they'll be patient to try to get what they can. Lindemann blocks, Brantley dunks. And Andre Patterson couldn't jump because he has five fouls. He was standing there and, and smartly started to jump, and he stopped Brantley quick for the dunk. For some jump shots, Purdue has gone into a 2-3 zone. Good, strong rebound there, Chad Austin. One over Patterson to pull that down. I think you're looking at some tired legs on the part of Indiana, and a lot of it has to do with the activity of Purdue. And Hairston draws an Indiana foul. This will be Lindemann's third. Well, another one of the starters is possibly getting in foul trouble, but while he wasn't, you see Lindemann go do a good job getting that away from Jennings. And you see standing under the basket is Patterson. He can't move, and Bradley just takes it strong, hoping that if somebody comes to try to block it, it becomes a foul. Roy Hairston. Short. He shot that one. That was close to being an air ball. That ball started spinning way too fast. He's only a 52% foul shooter. Got, got the sweet kick there. So Purdue leads by two. With the Vortec engine in a Chevy S-Series, you can go around the world four times before you have to stop for a tune-up. Have a nice trip. Chevy trucks like a rock. While everyone else is telling you which funds to buy, Small cap funds. I'd be looking at the Pacific Rim. Here's a tip on how to buy them. Mutual Fund One Source from Charles Schwab. The funds you want in one place, all with no loads. If your fund doesn't say this, maybe you're making life too complicated. Call now for six months of our Mutual Fund Select list free. That should do it. I'm transferring $100,000 right now. The electronic world can be a treacherous place. Yeah, well, look where we are. This doesn't look right. It looks great. I'm not happy here. And if you've got some kind of off-the-shelf network that's not custom designed for your business, then something unexpected can happen. It's not there yet? Make sure you stay in the chariot, Chuck. I guarantee you're going to win the dang race. <laughs> That's good. True story. Oh. <laughs> you are so special. That chariot thing you did and the water stuff. <laughs> I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light. Frankly, son, you frighten me. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And it's more like, I love you, man. <laughs> See? Los Angeles right after basketball for the final round of the Nissan Open. Craig Stadler has charged into the lead by two strokes over Scott Simpson and Neil Lancaster. Final round coverage of the Nissan Open right after NCAA basketball here on CBS. Purdue leads by two. We have 6.27 remaining. Indiana 
which has really going with only eight players most of the year anyway, has not subbed in the second half. They've gone with the same five for the entire half. Well, that's what I was saying to you. I figured that's what they would have to do because that group they have a better sense of how to play. They're all a little more experienced and having lost two or three players to either leaving school or as Coach Knight put them off, there's just not enough quality players he can keep going to. Good step in by Patterson, but I think Jennings blocked that shot. Now Porter Roberts pushing the ball. Gets stopped there by the seven-footer. I love the way Roberts plays. He has not turned the ball over today. No, he does a good job of you know, finding the people that need to score and keeping control of the ball. And that's one of the reasons that he, that the team is successful. You've got to have good guard play if you're going to be successful in the NCAA tournament. Well, look at Evans. Great play by Evans. Yeah, he took that shot halfway in between and he missed it, but he's got quick hands and got back in there and able to get that one down. That's from Jennings. Jennings fouling Charlie Miller. The shooter shoots the ball. He's the first one to know probably where it's going to head by the time it leaves his hand. It's a half shot, tough shot to take. Brian Evans missed it, came right there, and as Brantley had it in his hands, Evans knocked it out. Fortunately, gives his chance a second opportunity, and that's how Charlie Miller is now on the foul line. Evans is 7 for 17 on the floor today. He has 17 points. Miller makes the front end. That's the last one and one we'll have today. We foul the rest of the way. will be two shots. With most of the guys on the floor, Linderman's not going to shoot it very well. Indiana just going to get into Charlie Miller, Neil Reed, or Brian Evans, particularly his hand. Now that you're looking at foul shots, that's where you got to get with it. Now after Charlie Miller makes the foul shots, Indiana takes a 20. A tie game with 5.27 remaining. He's trying to, he knows how important it is here going down into the five-minute mark to get the, get his team in position defensively to make plays. I think the Indiana team has confidence in their offense. Purdue has their leadership, and I'm looking at Porter Roberts, who's just begging his team to let's get this thing done. It's his, their opportunity to get a win here in Bloomington, something the seniors have yet to do. Shooting for Purdue in the first half was 55%, just 33% in this half. You see, and in has got absolutely nothing from his bench, but Linderman has had an outstanding game, not missing a shot, with nine rebounds to go along with his 17 points. Indiana comes out and goes into a 2-3 zone, keep the ball out of the paint, know where the shooters are. That's the intent of that kind of zone. Did you ever play, did you play one minute of zone here? Played one minute, as a matter of fact, in <laughs> South Carolina, and in four years, that was my freshman year, never even came close to a zone. But I've got to say, Bob Knight's principles on, on, on defense uh, sometimes have the, because you sag and you help, you got people got some zone principles in it, the way you, you sag off the ball. But so do a lot of good coaches defensively. Purdue made seven threes in the first half. They have yet to make one in the second. They're 0 for 5 in the second half. That's really not their forte to make three. Lindemann missed the layup, but a foul. And a very good pass by Evans. I mean, that pass is over the top. Those are not easy passes to make, even when you have pressure on them. You see Evans right here. There's not a lot of pressure on him. He throws it over the top. Lindemann comes down, goes to the other side. He's got to gather himself to go up strongly. Bob Knight knows that's an opportunity that uh, those opportunities opportunities are fleeting. You see Linderman miss that and you know, going along with that. Linderman looking at an opportunity to get his career high should he knock down one of these free throws and get 18 points. Linderman, a fifth year senior. He's from a small town in the upper peninsula of Michigan, a real project. Yeah, he's been about a, a five-year project um, and has had some good games for them. And actually, he's played very well here. Obviously, having this career high has been a big part of the difference here in the second half. That's it. 19 points is a new career high for Lindemann. Indiana has a, a seven-footer coming in next year to replace him. Very highly regarded player, Jason Collier from Springfield, Ohio. Lindemann has done well with what he has. Collier may be a little bit more skilled. He's 6'6 and can shoot it. He can run. He's uh, athletic and passive. Probably can make more plays than Ken Linden. But once you're seven feet, you don't even get small when you get tired. 
Shot clock dwindling. Roberts with the force, and he draws the foul. And any time a whistle now blows against Indiana, somebody gets closer to being done for the day, and it's Charlie Miller here picking up his fourth. Roberts will be at the line for Purdue, 413 to play. They had their free throw shooting with practice yesterday. As you look at Arkansas LSU coming up next week and Villanova Georgetown. Georgetown also looking to do better in the seating there. That's going to be a good contest. But I was talking about the free throw shooting contest that Purdue had. Porter Roberts was the one that won it yesterday. He just misses two foul shots. And he has been a very good foul shooter in close games this year. Lindemann with two more. So now Indiana leads by four. Under four minutes to play. The pass is what makes the play because Evans gets it right where Lindemann, all he has to do is get it and put it right up. You don't want Lindemann to have to do anything other than catch the ball and shoot it. for three. Oh, oh, a really young fella. What a makeup for the missed foul shots. Back to a one-point game. First three of the second half for Purdue. Neil Reed got to the basket. Missed the left-handed layup, but the ball carries, and Hairston fouls Charlie Miller. Indiana is trying to come up with some of these loose balls. Had some success with that one. But Neil Reed catches the defense coming after. Take it to the basket. Harrison comes to get it. And the ball gets knocked loose. And then Charlie Miller takes it. And Harrison again. And protect the basket as you're supposed to. He gets called for the foul. But he also gets caught on the head. He is up. But he took a good shot in the head. That's four now against Roy Harrison. Well, the, the effect that Lindemann has had, Quinn, not just the points that he has scored, but the fouls that he's drawn on Purdue's big one. Well, that, that's what I was saying with him on the floor. Even Andre Patterson. Andre hadn't scored a whole lot for them, but he's big enough that he, ha he had to be occupied. So you're always coming off your man somewhat reluctantly, and in doing that, I think it takes away your real effectiveness, and, and you uh, consequently have left Lindemann open a couple times. 3.16 to go. It's Indiana by three. You I uh, drive oversized loads. And I drive the warning vehicle, the flag car. I've been using Penzo for about 17 years. Most people will trade their car with, what, 60,000 miles on it. We could have gone through seven cars. Right. With its revolutionary Penstar molecule, Pennzoil clings to moving parts. Works like liquid ball bearings. You could say it's been working overtime for us. It's showtime, baby. Get four bucks on a case of Pennzoil or 33 cents on every quart. I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. I just love to drive. The new 1996 Monte Carlo. Personal space from genuine Chevrolet. Tell you something. The way this point's going, get comfortable, because we could be here a while. Be here a while. Be here a while. Be here a while. Be here. Great. More tennis. Super. In 1895, Wilhelm Rentgen discovered X-rays. The following year, Siemens worked closely with him to develop its first X-ray tubes. That was then. This is now. Today, Siemens manufactures imaging technology that helps doctors save lives. And with 46,000 people nationwide, the men and women of Siemens will continue to manufacture ideas that even Professor Rentgen never dreamed of. Siemens Precision Thinking. The foul trouble affecting both teams, mostly with the big people, although Charlie Miller, a guard for Indiana, has also joined the group with four. And this is fully what you expect from Purdue and Indiana. 
a great basketball game. Indiana down 11 early in the second half, has come back to take a three-point lead. 3-10 to play, Purdue and Black with the ball. The seniors have it one in this building. Charlie Miller just fouled out. And that is Charlie Miller's fifth foul. So the first man to leave will likely not be the last to be excused for fouls. Miller leaving with 18 points. Well, what you lose is some athletic ability with Charlie Miller. Hadn't scored great numbers, but when they needed somebody to make foul shots, he can do it. Every time Purdue has tried to get out and run, defensively, he can get back and make some plays. But he's fouled out. He's actually played a heck of a game. That's the kind of game they expected more consistently of Charlie Miller. Let's see what this means. Don't take long to figure out what the Indiana Purdue game means, does it? Oh, this is this is the game that makes you year. The one thing Indiana has done now, Quinn, Mandeville, a seven-footer, replaces Miller. So they have Mandeville and Lindemann, two seven-footers, and Patterson in the game. But the problem is a little bit that you put, end up moving Brian Evans back to guard. And Brian Evans is so much more effective when he can stay on the wing to make the passes inside to uh, Lindemann as opposed to going back out to the guard position. He's just further away from the action. Purdue bringing Dove in for Foster. Indiana leading by two with 3.06 remaining. Here's what you mentioned. Now Evans being put in a position of having to handle. They got to do it over. And Purdue calling and they get the 10 second count. No, they got over and back is what they got. Did he change it to 10 seconds? Because what they had was Linderman started to go. Ed Hightower. The shot clock. If it gets to 25, then you have already surpassed your allotted, allotted 25 seconds. You can see right now it's not over. And uh, Patterson trying to call out, call timeout. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it for Indiana. Purdue gets what they want, putting the pressure on. That's what losing Charlie Miller gets you as far as Indiana is concerned. You lose the ball handler. And Todd Foster off the bench buries a three to get Purdue the lead. Foster's fifth three of the day. Purdue is out much more aggressively. They've got Foster, who will dog Brian Evans much more so than anybody else, because he's just that kind of character. You've got to find other scores. Mandeville. Oh, Richard Mandeville. His first points. Well, that's a lift they did not expect. He hadn't played all of the second half. Roberts with his first turnover of the afternoon, and Indiana gets the timeout as Patterson fell to the floor. I'm telling you, that was a great play by Neil Reed to read what happens. Tough pass to throw it in here. Porter throws it in. Coming up with the ball is, you can see, is Patterson, and Reed recognizes timeout. Like a six World Series. Six basketball seasons. Six hockey playoffs. Six football seasons. And just one tune-up after a hundred thousand miles. Vortec engines. One more reason to drive a Chevy truck. Chevy trucks. Sitco, our super premium gasoline will give you the high performance you demand. So prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. Help. They're in your town. family. They were once just like you, but now they need to fix their out-of-warranty electronics. And they're desperate. Well, they've come to the right place. Help! Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. This week on The Late Show, Oscar nominee Susan Sarandon, Robin Williams, Fran Drescher, Kelsey Grammer, Shania Twain, and Dennis Hopper. All new this week. 
Fast Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Sit go, just get up and go. Sit go says go. And by Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Ted Robinson, Quinn Buckner back in Indiana. The Hoosiers lead by a point, just over two minutes to play. Both teams fortified with timeouts. Both teams shooting two from the foul line, and Indiana has the arrow. You know, the other thing that is interesting, this score is a 71-72. When Indiana, who is the leading scorer in the conference, they, they average 76 points a game. That's 15-4 and four when they get over 70. And they have been just horrid when they don't do that. They have 0-6 when they're below 70. Now, Purdue, on the other hand, has held its, uh, its opposition to 55 points. So it looks like it ports toward Indiana. Anxious to see how this one comes out. Herb Dove rebounds Lindemann's miss. Final round coverage of the Nissan Open immediately after basketball here on CBS. Indiana by a point. Chad Austin, a guy that a lot of Indiana's attention will go to here. But that's who Porter Roberts just tried to get to. And, and wisely, Gene Cady takes a timeout, shot clock at eight, and he sees his team as not in sync to get a good shot. This Smithsonian Minute is brought to you by Intel, the computer inside. Today's computer industry started here. This is just part of the electronic numerical integrator and computer built for the military 50 years ago to determine how to aim big field guns. The invention from the University of Pennsylvania used almost 18,000 vacuum tubes and weighed 30 tons. By the 1970s, all of this computing power and more could be generated by this. What is a computer called? The answer after this. Intel is a partner in the Smithsonian Institution's 150th anniversary because we share its commitment to learning and discovery. Intel, the computer inside. The grandparent of today's modern computers is called ENIAC. I'm Congressman Esteban Edward Torres. The Smithsonian Institution, celebrating 150 years. 20 to play, eight seconds on the shot clock. Charlie Miller is the player that has fouled out. Brian Evans has played a long time with four fouls. Evans is a guy that, that's used to playing. He knows he has to be on the floor a lot of minutes. You can see the timeout situation. Neither team have a 20, both with two full, both in the double penalty. Arrow, possession arrow goes to Indiana. An important possession for Purdue. Purdue has to shoot here. Brad Miller, oh. rimmed and out. So Indiana has possession with a one-point lead, and Lindemann, with a career-high 21 points, just pulled out his 10th rebound. And shot his read went down on the baseline. They've got four, uh, Foster guarding Evans, and they got him out on the perimeter. I think you want to get Evans down on the block somewhere and let him try to go over the top if you can. Patterson kicks it out. Shot clock in trouble. He's got to shoot it. Patterson does. And the rebound, Purdue. Shot clock still on. And let's, Purdue is going to hold it. There's a three-second difference, as you can see, between the clocks. On the road, you got a veteran clue, crew. You go with it and let them get into their offense until you see that they're surely in trouble, and then you take that timeout. But this is a, this is a championship. Austin hits the Ooh. three. Chad Austin with 13.7 puts Purdue up by two. Well, it wasn't a senior, it was a sophomore. And he stepped up and buried a three. Well, yes, it definitely was a sophomore. It was the seniors that kept, I think, the cooler heads. They moved it around. You know you want to get it. And Porter Roberts is looking for him. You see he has his head looking for him. Foster knows right away where he wants to go with it. And Austin just drills it. Gets it out there. Patterson's there too late. Three-pointer. The finish is next. You in pain? Not now. My doctor gave me Tylenol. Extra strength. Wait, Tylenol works after knee surgery? Here I am. 
From post-surgical pain to headaches, doctors recommend Tylenol the most. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Hyperkeratosis, symptom, persistent, itchy, flaky scalp. Solution, Neutrogena T-Gel. It works. Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. Recommended number one by dermatologists. Chad Austin has just put Purdue in front with a three-point shot from the right corner. You see the shot clock. Got good shape. There's two seconds. And right away, Foster knows where he wants to go with the ball. Good screen inside by Brantley. Didn't allow either one of the IU players, either Linderman or Patterson, to get out. Now, Gene Cady stays calm because what he wants to try to say to his players is, look, there's a lot of time here. We've got to still play defense for 13.7 seconds. I saw Porter Roberts trying to calm his team down as soon as the same thing happened. Indiana probably wants to get this ball in the hands of Neil Reed to get it to Brian Evans so he can catch, make a play with a dribble. Indiana still has one timeout remaining should they encounter any trouble here. If you're the home club here, do you play for the two and the tie? Oh, yeah. I think that you take the, the, the first good shot you get. Because this tie, you don't have enough time to reset. Evans. Oh, no! Yeah, still lose. And Purdue, Purdue has won! won. As Porter Roberts drop kicks the ball off the scoreboard, the Big Ten leaders... Win one in Indiana. The first time the Purdue seniors have done it. And this is a team that now is thinking not just a Big Ten championship win, but they're thinking a number one seed. I thought right here, Purdue, Purdue had let him out. I said, oh, no, don't let him shoot it. You don't want to let this kid shoot it because Brian Evans can make it. But you see, right there, Porter Roberts gets it. And you're right, he drop kicked it. And the, those guys just went crazy. Purdue is now 23 and 4. They are 13 and 2. And they can clinch the Big Ten with two wins at home. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Chad Austin, for the game winning three for Purdue. 18 points, a great effort by Todd Lindemann. Career high, 21 points for Indiana. Now with Quinn Buckner, I'm Ted Robinson saying so long from Assembly Hall where Purdue beats Indiana by two. Stay tuned for final round action of the Nissan Open from California. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. The sky is not the limit at Purdue University. Students leap to new heights of learning. Professors explore new areas of knowledge. Graduates soar to the tops of their fields. Purdue is grooming some of America's best minds for the challenges of the 20th century. Catch IU basketball at its very best, right here on News Channel 15. For Illinois, Kewan Garris leads the team in scoring, and his penetration ability makes him a double threat. Richard Keene had a career-high 25 points against Iowa last time out and always plays well against Indiana. For the Hoosiers, Todd Lindemann had a career-high 21 points and 10 rebounds against Purdue Sunday. And Charlie Miller added his Big Ten season-high 18 points before fouling out. Illinois, Indiana next. <laughs> Assembly Hall in Bloomington with two teams fighting for NCAA positions. The Illini at six and eight. Indiana Hoosiers are eight and six. Hello, everybody. John Laskowski and Ted Kitchell. An important game for both teams. The leader for this Indiana team, Brian Evans, the Big Ten's leading scorer. Not only the leading scorer, but I think maybe not the best player in the Big Ten, but obviously the most valuable player to his team. All right. Time now for the Coquilin Fueling Factor. For Indiana, they've got to stop penetration. Kawan Garris is back for Illinois. They're playing very, very well. He likes to penetrate, dish out for that three-pointer. They took 30.
54 three-pointers in their last game against Iowa. And Indiana, they must take advantage of their big size inside. Todd Lindemann, a big game against Purdue. He needs another one tonight. Coca-Lane's quality fuels have additives that prevent fuel line freeze-ups and make your car start quickly. Coca-Lane, over 57 years of family pride, makes a difference. And now let's go to Mike Goldberg and Doug Altenberger. Well, thank you, guys. You know, they just talked about it a moment ago, the NCAA tournament picture. Four games left for the Fighting Illini. They need to win three to guarantee themselves a spot. Lots of motivation with Lou Henson announcing his retirement. Lots of motivation, Doug, for Richard Keene, the lone senior. Yeah, when you're a senior, you want to end up on a good note. I wouldn't be surprised to see Richard come out with a lot of emotion this year. I mean, the last three games here and try to you know, get his team going and get him in the tournament. Well, the guys also touched on the injury situation. Kiwan Garris did not not play in meeting number one between these two teams. Jerry Hester probably will not play a lot, if at all, tonight. So we'll watch for Jerry Hester. He has not practiced since hurting the ankle against Ohio State. That's the story. We are set for the tap here from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Lou Henson's final trip to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. Tonight's Big Ten game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Harness Herbicide, the herbicide that is as dependable as you are. And by Finish Line, for the latest in athletic shoes and clothing, head for the finish line. In the everyday world, it rains. With the world-class... Illinois and Indiana, Coach Bob Knight, just coming onto the floor, there he is. Ninth all-time winningest coach in NCAA basketball history. Time now for the Papa John starting lineups. Let's take a look at Illinois. Kawan Garris, obviously their key player, a guy that did not play earlier in the year against Indiana. He had a, had a uh, problem with his shoulder. Very, very important, a great player. Richard Keene, a guy who hit six three-pointers, took 12 in his last game. Jerry Gee inside, not a very big team. You can see... For Indiana, Charlie Miller and Neil Reed will be at the guards along with Todd Lindman who had a big game against Purdue on Saturday, or on Sunday, excuse me, and Brian Evans and Harris Muyazinovich. Muyazinovich moves into the starting lineup for Andre Patterson. And those are the Papa John's starting lineups. It's game time. Papa John's is the perfect call.